Hi, everyone, and welcome to Behind the Numbers. My name is Dave Bookbinder, and welcome to the show where we dig deeper to understand what really matters most in business. Today, we're talking about a very serious topic that everyone's going to lean into, and we're going to be talking about getting serious about chocolate. And I'm pleased to welcome Glenn Gardone, who's the president of Chocolate Distribution, who is the maker of Red Chocolate. And Glenn, welcome to Behind the Numbers. Dave, thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here, and hopefully I can uh, give the audience some uh, advice and some input that they can move forward on their journey. Now, I have no doubt, and I like that you're on brand with the red background for red chocolate, but let, let's start off by talking a little bit about the, the company. So it's a European business that launched in the U.S. Give us a little more background on the history of red. Sure. So Red has been around about 20 years. Uh, we started off before I had joined them. They were in about 20 countries, and through my travels, uh, you know, in business, I actually got to know the brand. Not really know the team. We're owned by two families, and uh, found out about the brand through my travels. Fell in love with Red. Fell in love with chocolate. Fell in love with just the taste and what they believed in, and uh, then had the opportunity actually to meet with the team. Uh, and uh, bring them over here to the U.S. about three years ago. So it's been a, a whirlwind, to say the least. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that whirlwind uh, in just a moment here. But I want to start off by just showing the audience that this is what the packaging looks like uh, for one of the products. Uh, and, and Glenn, I'll be honest with you, you know, in, in my experience with sugar-free chocolates, um, the hope was it doesn't suck. And I think you said that uh, so eloquently that oftentimes after eating sugar-free chocolate, uh, you almost feel like you would have been better off eating the wrapper. So this product is kosher, it's, it's gluten-free, and it's no sugar added, and it tastes really good. How did you do it? How do you make it taste so good? You know, I'd love to take the credit for it, but I'd lie to you. So uh, the two families that own us, they're master chocolatiers, and they actually spent three years in the kitchen crafting what became red chocolate. And the idea is, again, we, we hold 10 global patents, actually 11, our 11 came this year. Uh, but the, the patents really surround the way that we craft the chocolate. We do it at a much slower process. It's not about pushing, you know, 25 million bars off the line. We look at every time that we craft this product we want to make sure it's perfect so we do it at a much slower pace but because of that we're able to pull the notes out of the coca we're able to put the ingredients that we want in it it's not about you know speed and economies of scale it's never been the way we run the business and because of that as you said and that's probably the biggest thing that consumers always tell me is I really wasn't expecting it to be that good you know it's it's you know I've had these sugar freeze and it leaves a bad taste in my mouth or it tastes like a chemical and uh, you know I tried red and damn it's good and I love hearing that because red is like one of my kids at this point yeah it, and it is really good I, I want to explore a little bit the difference in palate if you will between say the European consumer versus the US consumer. What's been your experience and observations around that? Well, I'll tell you, so the consumer, uh, big difference in the consumer and what their tastes are. Uh, it's There's not as much of a difference between consumers worldwide on, you know, when they look at a product, you know, we call it the value of the product. And value could mean many different things, different to everybody, whether value is time, value is money, value is that you satisfy my cravings, my need, whatever the business is. When you look at chocolate, you know, when you go to the European side, Chocolate is a delicacy. It's not taken it's, and it's not purchased so that you can shove it in your mouth and just run and do what you want to do. They enjoy their chocolate, whether it be just, you know, being on the metro, whether it be sitting with a glass of red wine or really put, putting it in with their ingredients. And, uh, you know, we've started a, a chef series here in the U.S. on our website. And what that does is it shows people, you know, enjoy the bar, have, have at it. But there's other ways to really, really enjoy the benefits of chocolate, especially when you have a sugar-free chocolate and no sugar added, it's non-GMO, like you said. So really it's, you know, Europeans, they look for what we call inclusions. You know, they love a nut, they love fruits. Here in the U.S., we're definitely more focused on what we call the, the pure chocolates, whether it be dark chocolate, extra dark chocolate. But we, I've seen over the last couple of years, and really it's because of all the food shows that are on TV, I've seen people's palates become uh, more and more uh, accepting of different types of products. And chocolate, for instance, our orange and almond, our dark chocolate orange and almond, that's become 
very popular because people are looking for those differences. And what's great about a European chocolate, at least for me, we're not a nut cluster, as I always tell people. When you have a, you're going to taste the coconut. Think of it like a red wine. It's the easiest way for me to explain it. When you drink a red wine, you have the body, and then you've got the different notes based on the way that uh, it was progressed through their crafting method. European chocolate is the same way. You're going to have that beautiful coca taste, and then you'll have a hint of orange. You'll taste a little bit of almond. The idea is to enjoy the journey. Gotcha. Exactly. So when, when you think about consumers of sugar-free chocolate, um, people who are health conscious, weight conscious, uh, folks looking to reduce sugar, maybe diabetic or pre-diabetic, what have you, but this is good enough that it can be you know, anybody's go-to chocolate bar. Uh, talk a little bit about who the buyers are. We discussed palate, but who, who are the, the consumers? You know, the consumers, and it, and it has expanded exponentially over the last couple of years. Our consumer, uh, we're 87% of the time we're purchased by uh, females. 13%, uh, of course, uh, are over the age of 53, with the majority of that being men. And the reason is uh, women are smarter than men. I guess is the best way to put it. You know, no argument uh, there. men go to the doctor and the doctor says, you know what, you're really taking care of yourself. You better start pulling back on certain things. And everybody likes to indulge. Everybody wants to indulge. So what we do is people have called our category healthy chocolate. I hate that term because there's no such thing as healthy chocolate. We call ourselves smart indulgence. Look, you're going to indulge. You deserve to indulge. Just do it a little smarter. And it, so we found that... Uh, Early adopters, of course, were women, but now we're seeing more and more men come over and, and trying out red because of the fact that they're looking to indulge, but they're looking to do it a little smarter. So for us, not only are we growing the category, which is always what you want to do, you say in retail, uh, but we're also growing the consumer base that's visiting the category. And that's just as important, if not more important, because what that does is it puts more water in the ocean. So all the boats can rise. Gotcha. I want to talk a little bit about the, the types of product that you have available. The, the item I showed here is kind of a breakaway bar. Uh, there's little individual squares you break away, three squares is a serving. Uh, what else do you have? I know you've got some snack bars. Why don't you tell the audience about the types of products that are available right now? Absolutely. So we've got what we call three different lineups. So red being in a large bar, as you said, this is our three and a half ounce bar. And when I tell people all the time, a third of this chocolate bar actually is a serving. And that has the same amount of calories as an apple slice. As you said, you know, the squares, we call them diamonds. Six diamonds is, is a serving. And if you have six of our diamonds, believe me, that is a perfect serving for you. It leaves you satiated. And that's what we always try to do because we want you to enjoy the bar. We then go into our, what are called our grab and gar, which grab and go, which uh, you'll find uh, in convenience stores and some drug stores throughout the U.S. and, of course, online always. Uh, and that is our smaller bar, which is a serving. Uh, so that way you have it, you can eat it, immediate uh, consumption, immediate gratification, and you move on. And the great thing about it, of course, being that we're no sugar added, you don't get that sugar rush and then that crash. So that's why people enjoy eating it during the day so they don't have to worry about, you know, falling asleep at their table. Uh, and then we have what we call our diamond pralines. We call them pralines because they're from Europe. Here in the U.S., they're, they're more well known as truffles. And we have that in our milk chocolate with nut and our milk chocolate with uh, coconut. And so that was uh, a product where three of these pralines, if you had them, you're satiated for hours because you get, the, again, that gorgeous coca taste. You get that mixture of coconut or the mixture of nut, hazelnut spread. And, you know, it's been perfect. And you'll find those, especially around the holidays, very, very popular from a gift giving, whether it be hostess or teachers or anybody that you work with. Because what it does is it gives you, we like to say, chocolate says I love you, flowers say I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you look for a gift, pretty simple, chocolate fits everyone. 
And who doesn't like to get some chocolate, whether it be in the mail or whether it be, you know, giving to them eye to eye. You know, we're, we're sold on the Home Shopping Network. We're actually the top chocolate sold on the Home Shopping Network. I've had a great partnership with them for two years. And you'd be amazed how many people say, you know what, this is so easy. I can go online, I can buy it and have it shipped direct and I can have my little note in it. This is perfect. So, you know, it's been, it's been a, a, a great, fun ride and it's been more successful than I ever thought I could. And I, I've been in this business for 30 years, so I've seen a lot. Yeah, Glenn, thanks for calling me out on the serving size, too. I've been cheating myself. I thought that three squares was a serving, so um, I've been only having half a serving, so I can have more now. That's good to know. Uh, and, and for folks watching and listening, i got to tell you, the, the caramelized white chocolate, uh, I think that you guys call it blonde or something to that effect, one mm. of the best things you'll ever eat. Uh, Glenn, tell folks who are watching and listening where they can uh, buy red chocolate and how they can connect with you if they want to learn more about you. Absolutely. So, you know, you talked about the caramelized white chocolate. And I always tell people that if you start off with the caramelized white chocolate, uh, you're in for a treat. There is nothing like it in the United States. I told you we have uh, our 11th patent this year, and it was actually on our blonde chocolate. Blonde, again, is a caramelized white chocolate. Caramel, of course, being sugar, we're no sugar added. So we've actually had a patent to be able to pull the natural sugars from a, cow, from a Holstein cow milk, uh, and we add that to our white cocoa base. So you can find all of our products. We're at about 15,000 store doors across the country, from uh, all Kroger and all their banners to Rite Aid to all the super regional chains throughout these specific areas. You can always go to our website, too, at www.red-chocolate.com, and you'll find all the products. You'll learn about the history. I tell people, stop by the Chef Series, take a look at it, because you'll get some great recipes, especially for the holidays. We just did a, uh, a chocolate mousse here uh, the other day, and it was so, so good. And it's, uh, you know, I'm amazed when I sit down with the chefs and some of the ideas they come up with. And so that would be the best way to get us. You can always, like I said, go to our site, best place to stop in. And most major retailers in the United States carry red, if not, by all means, yell at them and tell them that you want them to carry red. And to reach out for me and to talk to me anytime, best way is to get me on the website. My contact info is there. I love talking to folks. You know, we are extremely, extremely consumer focused. We talk to consumers every day. We're not in front of computers trying to look at algorithms. We want to know what our customers, what our red family thinks and understands and wants to see from us. You know, a running joke here that I always tell people is, I don't have a single boss. I've got about 1.2 million bosses every single week because they let me know what's going on. And I like it. Well, I hope you're getting good performance reviews. Glenn, you got to sit tight. We're going to have to take a quick commercial break here. Uh, folks watching and listening, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Behind the Numbers and more with Glenn Gardone from Red Chocolate right after this quick break. Hi, I'm Bob Hokertle from Kings Road Brewing Company. I'm here to tell you about a brand new show on RVN television called Cooking with the King. Each week, we're going to taste and sample some of the best beer the Kings Road Brewing Company has to offer. And we're going to talk to area chefs and restaurant owners as we pair our beer with their signature dishes. We're going to teach you how to cook and eat like a king. Cheers. A stroke can be easy to detect. A loved one can't speak, perhaps they can't move. But there's another sign of a stroke that many of us can't see. It's called spatial neglect, and it can occur during or after a stroke causing distorted visual movements. Fortunately, there's a solution by using optical prism technology during rehabilitation. If you or a loved one have experienced a stroke, ask your doctor about spatial neglect. Spatial neglect. See the whole picture at KesslerFoundation.org. Are you burned out, disenfranchised, disengaged? And welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and today we're talking about chocolate with Glenn Gardone, who's the president of Chocolate Distribution, who is the maker of red chocolate. Glenn, welcome back to the second segment here. 
Thank you, Dave. Thank you. I look forward to uh, continuing our conversation. Yeah, glad you're still with me. So, all good. Hey, we did a, a good job covering the waterfront in terms of the, the history of red and the product and so forth and your secret sauce, if you will. I want to devote this uh, a good chunk of this next segment to the business aspect. It's an entrepreneurial journey for you as well, besides producing a really good product. And one of the interesting things is you mentioned you launched three years ago uh, in the middle of a pandemic, no less. Talk about what that was like. I mean, it's challenging enough to launch in, in the U.S., right, on a, on a normal basis, but now here you are in the middle of a pandemic. Speak to that, if you would. Well, I tell you, you know, I wish I had that crystal ball. We actually launched in the U.S. about roughly five months before a global pandemic hit uh, and shut down the world, as you know. And uh, I know a lot of organizations that, that, uh, that make it through. And, you know, everybody took a knee. You know, especially organizations our size, because uh, we had to understand what the new landscape looked like. And if it wasn't for the team that I have, that I am uh, that, that that I am honored to lead here in the U.S. that uh, has passion and commitment, I honestly don't think we would have made it. And we call it punching through the mud, because ultimately. We had to be successful. We wanted to be successful because we knew what we had. It wasn't anybody looking for a job. My people are great. They can go get a job anywhere they want. And so it's not that. It was that they believed in the message. They believed in the journey. And so we sat down. And I'll give you a perfect example. So, again, you know, we are a chocolate brand. We ship every day out of our facility. Uh, and my head of supply chain sees with me a very long time. Uh, and so she had called me when this just first began and everything was shut down. And we didn't know what was going on. We weren't sure what to do. And so she said, look, Glenn, I need to go back into the office. My team needs to be there. We need to ship product. I said, okay, well, look, let's, let's walk. Let's figure out to make sure that everybody's okay. We don't want to hurt anybody. That's most important. And so we put the steps in place. And I said, look, if you're going to be there, I want to be there too because I want to help if needed. And so I came in and it was it was us. And then my head of marketing called probably a day or two later and said, hey, you guys in the office? I'm like, well, yeah, but look, don't worry about it. We can work from home. And she, and she said, no, no, I want to be there. I need to be there. And so she came in, and I will tell you that within two weeks, everybody within our organization came in. We were safe. We made sure that we did what we needed to do, but ultimately, the organization thrived because of it. And we made sure that we still satisfied our partners' needs, making sure that trucks were on time, making sure that deliveries are on time. And believe me, one of the probably the, the not probably the toughest part of my career was the beginning of that for probably six or seven months till we started getting into the groove and starting to get things done but i'll tell you what if it wasn't for my team i don't know if we would have survived just because of the the impact that the whole piece had so you know i'd love to sit there and say oh, i'm just a great leader and you know i forced to it but you know what it was my team I, I am honored and thrilled to have the team I have. And they just said, you know what? No, we're, 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 we're a family. We're going to get through this together. And so we started that process. And then after that, Dave, it really was a matter of, okay, how do we get the message to the consumer? I was talking a little bit earlier about the value for a consumer because the consumer hadn't changed. The consumer was still there. The consumer was still looking for that value. Again, it could be a cost. It could be uh, a flavor. It could be uh, from a health perspective, whatever their value is. Um, but we needed to get that message to them because, as you remember, not a lot of people going into the stores. And while we love our e-commerce family, we love that business, we are a retail-focused business. So we had to make sure that we were able to get the message out to the consumer. So that really was the Herculean effort by my marketing team, by my head of digital marketing, to see how we can get that message out there. And really, that's what allowed us to have that process. It was a lot of, okay, let's figure it out right now, because you couldn't plan for it. You can't plan for a global pandemic. So we had a plan based on today on today's situation, but then we had to be very fluid because today's situation, as you remember, changed weekly. Oh yeah. So that was probably our biggest aha moment for us. 
Yeah, it warms my heart to hear you in talking about the contributions of the team. And look, don't sell yourself short. And you're obviously a good leader by virtue of the fact that you're calling them out. So uh, congratulations to you for that as well. I want to talk about packaging for a moment here, Glenn. So you look at this package. It looks pretty simple and pretty straightforward. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it took you quite a long time to get the ingredient panel done, right? Well, I'll tell you, you know, so again, being a European company, there are European standards. I'll give you a very simple example. So when I looked at the packaging, the first thing I said was, hey, guys, I got to put non-GMO on the package. And the European team, of course, was like, why? Everything's non-GMO in Europe. I'm like, yeah, we're not in Europe anymore, Toto. So we had to go through and we had to make sure, again, based on the standards we have for the U.S., what could we talk to the messaging on the package? package so whether it be the call outs about non-gmo gluten-free kosher to all the other pieces the ingredient panel and the way that we do our calorie count versus what european does with the cake house so there's a lot of different pieces that we had to go through both front and back to deliver the message we wanted but to deliver the message properly to american standards to american consumer standards so that took us close to three and a half, four months just to get ready, get it approved, and then get into process. Remember, we make all of our own products. This isn't something where we co-pack from somebody else. Our facility in Europe, it's like NASA. It's the best way for me to explain it. It's incredible. Uh, and so just getting them set up, getting them to run. And you know, for us, because of the success we've had, that entire facility handles only US products. So much easier now. But in the beginning, I was sharing it and let me tell you, it was just a tiny little piece. So there was a, you know, may I have some more, please? May I have some more? And so now it's, again, it's been a big change, but everybody within the Red family is thrilled. And again, I, I couldn't be happier about the consumer acceptance of Red. Yeah, Glenn, we're getting down to the short strokes here. Time goes very, very quickly. But tell the audience again how they can connect with you or where they can find Red Chocolate. Best way to connect with me is to go right to our website. All of our my information is there. You can connect with myself or any one of my team. And that's www.red-chocolate.com. Don't forget the dash. Uh, and you'll find myself. You'll find the history of Red. You'll find out about the Chef Series. Whole bunch of different things that you can find there. Plus, you'll get in touch with myself. If I can help you, great. If I can't, I can at least give you uh, some direction. And to find Red again, you can start it at the website. We have a store locator in there where you type in your zip code. As a matter of fact, I think there's a coupon there right now for buy one, get one free. So make sure you go to the site so you can get the coupon and try us out. Try one of our six flavors in our bars or try our beautiful uh, pralines. Again, truffles here in the United States. Uh, and uh, let us know what you think. We'd love to have you as part of the Red Family. And Dave, I appreciate you being part of the Red Family. Well, it's my pleasure. Glenn, we've got about uh, maybe two minutes or so to go here, but I want to give you the final word and, and ask, what, what's next for Red Chocolate? What's in the works? What can we look forward to in terms of new products, new markets, what have you? So uh, new markets, ever present, ever growing, you know, actually just in the process of launching into Canada, we're about probably five, six months away because we have the, you know, the regulatory processes we're going through. From a new product standpoint, we actually have a lineup of vegan products, which are uh -huh. oat milk based, which uh, if you've ever had it, uh, oat chocolate, it gets very gritty and I hate it. Well, our team uh, in Europe, uh, my, our master chocolatiers, found a way to triple screen the oat milk. It is the smoothest, creamiest chocolate I think I've had within the vegan option. And I'll put it up against any regular chocolate here in the United States, American chocolate, and I think it'll knock their socks off. And we're going to launch that actually at the end of Q1 next year. So the end of March, beginning of April time frame. So we've got a vegan lineup coming for that. But again, if you haven't had a chance to try red, come into the family, try us out, uh, and I, I know you'll love us. I can almost guarantee it. And if you don't like us, you got my information there right on the website. You let us know, and we'll make sure we take care of you because we want you happy. We want you satisfied. It's yeah, my, what we believe in. My, my vegan friends are going to be thrilled to hear this news. That's awesome. And if you guys do a, as a good a job with the vegan as you've done with the sugar-free, I know you're going to crush it. And I, I don't do paid endorsements, but I'm not embarrassed to, to share an opinion. And like I said, uh, your product is, is really, really good, especially that caramelized white. Uh, Glenn, unfortunately, we are out of time here, but I want to thank you again for joining us today on Behind the Numbers and sharing the red chocolate story. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it.
So we've been talking today with Glenn Gardone, who is, again, the president of Chocolate Distribution, the maker of Red Chocolate. Definitely check them out and, uh, and, and let us know what you think, as Glenn said. A lot of good stuff out there on their website. My name is Dave Bookbinder, and I help my clients in valuing their businesses and intangible assets. If you have a need or want to have a conversation, don't hesitate to reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn. And that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, we really appreciate your support for the show. You take care. We'll see you next time on Behind the Numbers.